Hello everyone. Welcome to New Testament Christian Center. This is Pastor Joel, and we are so excited that you're here today. And if you're a guest, let me be the first to tell you that it is such an honor to have you on our campus. You're about to be surrounded by some of the most amazing people that love God and love this community. And we just hope that you enjoy your time with us today as we gather together and worship our Heavenly Father. Now, Proverbs 16 and 9 says this, that although we may make plans, ultimately it is God that directs and orders our steps. So we just believe that no one is here today by accident, including you, but rather we are here in the divinely designed plan of God's will. And so let me just encourage you to just jump in today and worship God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Now here's what you can expect while you're here with us today. Psalm 100 says this, that we should shout for joy to the Lord. It says we should worship God with gladness in our heart, that we should come before His gates with thanksgiving and enter His courts with praise, be thankful unto Him, and bless His name. And today, you are going to be joined by people that are going to do exactly that. Now, we all respond to the presence of God a little differently. Some of us lift our hands. Some may clap their hands. We're going to sing out loud. We're going to give God thanks and praise as we worship Him. You may even see a person get excited when they begin to think about the goodness of Jesus and all that He's done for them. You're also going to hear a life-changing, inspiring message from God that is going to challenge you and encourage you in your walk with God. The writer of Hebrews says that the Word of God is alive and it can actually penetrate our hearts, the innermost part of our being, and that's where real transformation happens. That's where God does His best work on the inside of us. Our goal at NTCC has always been to worship God in spirit and also in truth just like Jesus said in John 4, 24. And so since God has ordered your steps to be here today, then our prayer is that you receive everything from God in this moment and in this season of your life. So I urge you just to open your heart, open yourself up to the moving of the Spirit of God and let God bless you today. Here at New Testament Christian Center, our vision is to help people get to know God, to grow in their faith so that we can ultimately serve others and go change our world. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
Welcome. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. I praise your name. I praise your name. You are Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. I praise, I praise your, name. your name. I praise, I praise your, name. your name. Hallelujah. Holy, 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 holy. You are worthy. You are worthy of my praise. Of my praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy, holy, holy. You are worthy of my praise. You are Alpha and Omega. You are Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Oh, I praise your name. I praise your name. You are Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. I praise, I praise your, name. your name. I praise, I praise your, name. your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy, holy. Holy, holy. You are worthy, you are worthy of, my of my praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy, holy. holy, holy. You, are worthy you are worthy of my praise. Say halle, halle, hallelujah. Halle, halle, hallelujah. Halle, halle, hallelujah. Halle, halle, hallelujah. Oh, halle, halle, hallelujah. Halle, halle, hallelujah. I pray your name. My 
Bringing us here safely, we uh, thank you for joining New Testament Christian Center on, online as well as right here in service on today. We ask that you bless God as we continue to go forth in the service. We continue to lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. I will wait on you. I will trust. trust in you the Lord is my light and salvation whom shall I fear whom shall I be afraid the Lord is my light and salvation whom shall I fear whom shall I be afraid I will wait on
us on today, Lord God. God, look upon us, O oh God, as we go through a day of food, family, and fellowship, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, even, God, as we go forth and enjoy ourselves, God, let somebody leave here changed, Lord God. Hallelujah. Let this be a time of fellowship, but God, also let it be a time of love, oh God. Oh God, help somebody, Lord Jesus, to know that somebody's there to help them and support them along this walk, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, God, we ask, Lord God, that you come in today on today's service like never before, Lord Jesus. God, even in a time when we don't do the traditional, oh God. Oh God, we ask that you bless the food, Lord Jesus, that will be prepared on today, oh God. Oh God, we ask, Lord God, that you bless the offering that we're about to receive on today, Lord Jesus. Oh God, let people give from their hearts, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus, God. God, you said with two or three are gathered in your name, Lord God, you will be in the midst. So God, be in the midst of us on today. Hallelujah, God, we thank you, we praise you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank God on today. You all may be seated for a little while. Hallelujah. We thank God for, to, uh, for being here on today. We're going to read our scripture for today, which is Malachi 3, 10 through 12. It said, bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now wherewith, says the Lord of hosts, if I should not open up a window of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that you should not have uh, room to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall the vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, said the Lord. And all nations shall be called blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, says the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. God said, prove me. Make me a lie. Make me a lie. He said, prove me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I like that about when God tells us to try him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're going to read our awesome prayer for today. Hallelujah. If you would stand again and read our awesome prayer for today. <clears throat> Amen. Upon the authority of your word, I have given and it shall be given back to me. Press down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither and I give my offerings willingly. I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. You will restore what the enemy has stolen from me. I now live under the open windows of heaven. You pour out on me such a blessing that there will not be enough room to receive it. So today we receive financial blessing, health and strength, abundance to walk in divine favor, my whole family saved and walking with God. I am now blessed coming in and I'm blessed going out. All that I do will prosper according to his will in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, <laughs> hallelujah. We ask that everybody, even if you have given your offering online or on the phone, just go back and walk. And as you're walking, hug somebody, fist bump somebody, and tell them you're glad to see them. Amen. 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 You are free to go ahead and give your offering. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. amen. What a wonderful Sunday. I have never seen a quiet fellowship Sunday. This is new for me. Mostly everybody's like excited. You can't, they're jumping off the walls. Y'all are the most calm fellowship Sunday crowd I have ever seen. So we're going to do a do-over right here. We're going to act like this is the beginning of service. If you're glad to be here, shout yes. yes. That was all right. Look at somebody say, that was okay. Let's try one more time. If God has been good to you and you know it, shout yes. yes. Amen. It's all right to get loud. All you Alabama fans have been loud for the last 200 years. Y'all have won championships every year. I, it would be a shame. You can be, a, you can be seated. It would be a disgrace to go to an Alabama game and shout louder there than you would in, in church. Because Nick Saban, as I say all the time, hadn't done near as much for you as Jesus Christ has. Praise God. Keep playing, if you will, Sister Mitchell. I kind of like 
I kind of like that music behind me. It's good to have you here today, and uh, we are going to just do a little quick devotion, if that's all right, and then we are going to have a great time. There's a crew of people out there setting up tents, uh, and they're supposed to be in here right now, but I guess maybe they didn't get the message, or maybe they did get it. That would be even cooler and worse. Amen. Look at somebody and say, God is good. Amen. Well, we are so thankful you're here today, and um, I am just glad to have Fellowship Sunday. You know, it's a time where we can get together and kind of fellowship, just hang out, and uh, have a good time in the Lord. We've got bounce houses. How many of you saw all the stuff coming in? we got tents out there for shade, bounce houses. Uh, they're ready. These kids are ready. That means I need to hurry up. I need to just get out of the way. If you think pastor needs to get out of the way, just say amen. That was a trick question. <laughs> Got a few amens and a few, oh, Lord, I'm going to be struck dead. <laughs> well, greetings. We're glad you're here. I just want to uh, say we had an incredible Mother's Day last Sunday. And I was just, it was amazing. We had five families out traveling for Mother's Day. If they had been here, we would have had to pull out chairs. It was that packed. It was a great Mother's Day. And then this weekend, I told someone, a pastor friend of mine, Yesterday, we had, uh, we, our church hosted the Alabama youth worship team practice for our state, and we had all kinds of young people. One of the pastors was here, and uh, I said, yeah, I guess this is that time of the year where every weekend it seems like you got three or four or five families out. We got, uh, we have our Bible quiz team. I don't know how many people, uh, 10 or so people that are traveling. They're in Louisiana. They quizzed yesterday, had a great time. I forget how many teams were there. My wife's in here. Sister Mitchell, how many teams were in that? 30, 40, 30 teams? It was a lot. And they're in Alexandria, Louisiana. Uh, the Krauses are, are there with them and several other families that are traveling. Of course, this is drill weekend for those that are in the military. Everybody say, oh, yeah, drill weekend. They didn't do it last weekend because it was Mother's Day. But we're just excited about what God is doing. Um, one thing I want to make mention of, so as many of you know, we are in a transition with our music department, and Brother Gideon has moved, but I am so thankful to my mother, who is the interim music director now. Isn't she doing a great job? So if you don't know, she did music for like years. We're not going to say how many, but she has been in retirement, and she is pulling a Tom Brady, if any of you know the football reference. She said, y'all just thought I was retiring. I'm coming back, and I am taking over. And we're so thankful for her. She's, she's one of the most anointed, skilled singers and musicians. And thank you, Mom, for, for, uh, for helping. But I wanted to say this. If you are a part of this church or if you would like to be a part of our music team, they're going to meet real quickly in the conference room, which is right over here. Uh, Mother Mitchell said she wants to meet with everybody that's in the music team. So if you're on the music worship team or you want to be a part of it, come back here. It'll be a quick meeting. We know we have hot dogs that are going to be ready for everybody. So she just wanted to meet with everyone real quickly. And again, thank you uh, for doing what you do. Amen. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord? If you have your Bibles, because you knew I was going to get there eventually. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 1. And I'm going to just do a little devotion here for us today. And I tell you what, we have a, a history, I guess is probably the best way of saying this, a standing for the reading of the word. So I'd like to ask you to stand with me. Uh, we are a Pentecostal church. You do not have to go to the gym to be a part of our church. You will get your exercise every single service because it is up, down, up, down, worship. Today is a little mild and calm, but normally we have folks that are, I mean, if, you, if you've been in an apostolic church, y'all know what it's like to leave sweaty when the spirit of the Lord hits. Now, the spirit of the Lord struggling a little bit today because y'all got your mind on bounce houses. And hot dogs, but normally when the Holy Ghost is in the house, people are waving their hands, and man, you get all kinds of like, you just bring your kettlebells with you. And then you run up and down, I mean, you get all kinds of exercise. Amen. Well, some of y'all woke up grumpy, so I'm just going to go to the word of the Lord, and we're going to read Second Peter chapter 1, verse 1. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Everybody say, that's us. That's the church. That's who he's writing to. Grace 
and peace be multiplied unto you. Look at your neighbor and say, that's unto you. Through the knowledge of God, even, that word and there means even, kai, K-A-I, even of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things. Aren't you glad you have the Holy Ghost power? Resurrection power. Given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowing, the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory. Everybody say to glory. He's called us to glory and to virtue. There's a topic you don't hear preached much in churches anymore. Old timers call that holiness or righteousness or godly living. But God has called us to that whereby we are given exceeding great and precious promises that by these you might be partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, and, and, everybody say and, and conjunction, there we go, and besides this, giving all diligence, you got to do this with diligence, add to your faith virtue, and add to your virtue knowledge, and add to your knowledge temperance, and add to your temperance hate that word. <laughs> Anybody else impatient in the house? Add patience and add to your patience godliness and add to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness add charity. For if these things are in you and they abound, then they will make you that you will not be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of of our Lord Jesus Christ. So you could also say it this way, if they're in you and they abound, then you shall be fruitful and you will abound in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And so for the next, I want to preach for an hour, but I won't. For the next few minutes, I'm going to talk to us from knowing to growing. Everybody say from knowing to growing. Look at your neighbor and say, now that you know, you got to grow. Amen. You can be seated in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And the way we work around here is if you help me preach, I go really fast. You say, Pastor, how do I help you preach? By just saying amen. I, there you go. That took five minutes off the, the message right there. So if you help me preach, I'll go really fast. But two weeks ago, well, last week was Mother's Day, but two weeks ago we started a series and we asked the question, why? Why? Why do we exist? What's the point of coming to church? Why do we get dressed up on a Sunday morning? Or why do we not get dressed up on a Sunday morning? <laughs> why do we show up? There's a better way to ask it. Why do we do what we do as Christians in our daily lives? At the end of the day, we all need to ask ourselves the question, why? Every good corporation, company, business, there's books out there, uh, Knowing Your Why. You've got to know why you do what you do. Why do we clap our hands? Why do we praise God? Why do you spend time every day in prayer? For those of you that do. <laughs> why do you read your Bible? Why? What, what's the point? It's been there for thousands of years. Why? Here's a bigger question. Why does this church exist? Why do we have praise and worship? Why do we need a music director? What's the point of having a song and singing hymns and praises unto God? Why do we act godly? That's a good place to say amen. That takes 10 minutes off the message. Why do, we, why do we dress modestly and strive for a life of holiness and righteousness? Well, we just read a scripture that says you ought to do it. But, but why do we do? Why do we have children's ministry, youth ministry? Why do we do our community service? And we asked all of these questions a couple of Sundays ago, and we found an answer in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10. And the apostle Paul gives us a little insight into his life by making this proclamation in Philippians 3 and 10. He says, I want to know him. I want to know him in the power of his resurrection, and I want to know him in the fellowship of his suffering. I want to know him. So, so when we ask the question why, the apostle Paul said, my prayer, my desire, my passion, my reason for living, if you just want to get down to the basics this is the why I want to know God. I want to know him. I just want to know. The old timers say it like this. I want to know that I know that I know him. Anybody know him like that? I want to, oh, I know him. 
I know him. He's a good God. He's a great God. I know him. That's why he said that's everything in my life can be summed up in that passage of Scripture. That's why I praise him, Paul said. That's why I pray every day. If you want to know why Paul did what he did, started all the churches he did, he said, I want to know God. That's why we read his word, so we can know God. That's why I give. That's why I serve. That's why I live the way. I don't live like everybody else lives. I've got a different hope than they do. John talked about that. He said, if you have hope in this world, then you're of all men most miserable. I don't live. I live in this world, but I'm not of this world. I'm living a different way. I've got my eyes on the hills from whence cometh my help. But I know that. I know that's why I do what I do. People say, why do you do that? Why do you show up on Sunday? Why do you get up early? Why do you prepare a message? Because I want to know him. And I want everybody that I meet to know him. Because if you ever get to know him like I'm learning how to know him, it'll change your life. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I'm trying to tell him to everybody I meet, I, I, you got to know him. And folks say, oh, I know him, I know him. And, but then I watch them and I'm like, well, they may not know him like I know him, but I want to help them know him a little bit. Anybody feel that way? I want to know him. I want to know him. I want to know him in his resurrection power. But here's the thing. There's another component, and I'm, I'm, I'm about halfway done, so if you're going to get on board, just jump in the, in, the, in the boat and grab a paddle. Here we go. This is it. There's, there's another component to this spiritual equation. We're, we, we took Mother's Day off to celebrate our mothers, but we started the first Sunday of this month. The reason why we exist is, A, to know God. Everybody say, I want to know him. But there's another component to this equation. There's a reason, another reason why we exist as a church. There's, there's more to it. Because knowing will lead to growing. Let me say that again. Knowing God will lead to growing in God. The more you know, the more you'll grow. Y'all are so smart. See, I come up here thinking I got it up, man. They're gonna be, they're gonna be just amazed by this, and y'all are saying it before I get it out of my mouth. Y'all got it together. The best example I can think of. Of, of this principle, knowing will lead to growing. And this is a, this is a hard one. And we have guests in the house, so uh, I don't ever really do this a lot. They're going to be like, yeah, all preachers say that. But, but the more I know, the more I'll grow. The best example I can think of, brace yourselves, is tithing or giving. Oh, okay, I got a few amens. <laughs> knowing equals growing, right? Because if knowing leads to growing, then it becomes easier to give God Watch this, his 10% back to him because I realize and I know that it was never mine in the first place. That's, that's knowledge, right? It's not, and, 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 and as I grow, I start to learn that when I return my tithes, that's a better word. We don't give tithes. You don't give tithes to God. God's like, that's mine to begin with. You're, you're, not really, you're returning. Everybody say returning. Now, now, we're not talking about tithes specifically. We're illustrating the principle of knowing leads to growing. When I know about him, when I start knowing more about him, then I realize and then learn that I can return my tithes. And when I return my tithes back to him, then I start learning more about him. I learn well, that it mean, what it means for him to open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. When I, when I, when I know, I start to grow. And as I grow, I start to learn, okay, now I know what it means for him to rebuke the devourer. I used to hear my grandmother say that. You know, there's a scripture in the Bible where God promises when you bring tithes back to him, he said, I will give you back what the locusts have eaten and the palmer worm and the canker worm. Anybody know that scripture? That's one of those you don't hear preach from very often. What's a canker worm? I don't know, but I know this is as I grow in my faith and as I know more about him and I grow, then I start understanding more about God. And I realize, okay, if I bring back to him what's already his, then he will take care of my fields. I, don't, I didn't know what it was to open the windows of heaven. But now, now I know. Oh, I know what it's like to walk to the mailbox and be out of money and there's a check there. Somebody just said, hey, I know what it's like to have groceries left on the doorstep when you didn't know where you're. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I know what it's like to have tires in a, on a car and an old beater car that everybody else's beater car was breaking down, but mine was still chugging along because it's just like the children of Israel in the wilderness. The Bible said the shoes didn't wear off their feet and the clothes didn't wear off their back. You know why? Because they were trusting God. The more you know, the more you grow. 
Man, you've been wearing that suit a long time. I know it fits good, doesn't it? I haven't outgrown it yet. God is keeping me. Y'all spending all that money. You may have it. I don't have it. All I know is God just keeps providing. He just keeps making a way when there is no way. That's what you know. And when you start knowing that, you start growing, and it's this cycle. So it's part of my spiritual growth. The more I know about him, the more I grow in him. So we can take that same principle and use it in other biblical applications. I just wanted to, to drop tithing and offering there, just, you know, shake things up a little bit. <laughs> but watch this. How about praise and worship? Now, all you that get real excited in church, just be calm because this is a fellowship Sunday. We have guests in the house. Don't jump up and start shouting hallelujah. But how about praise and worship? When I begin to praise him, I have learned and I've grown in the knowledge that as I begin to praise him, my own personal walls of Jericho can come down. It, it goes from being a Bible story thousands of years ago to watching God drop walls in my life just by simply praising him. Lord, I praise you. I worship you. The more you know, the more you grow. I've learned that when my praises go up, what comes down? What comes down? Favor comes down. Blessing comes down. I've learned that. So the more you know, the more you grow. And the more I grow, the more I know. It's just like this cycle. The more I seek to know him, the more I keep growing him. So we're talking about why we exist as a church. We want to know him in the power of his resurrection. But we also want to grow. Tell your neighbor, the more you know, the more you'll grow. Come on, look at him in their eyes. Turn around behind you. Look at somebody and say, the more you know, the more you'll grow. And tell them, the more you grow, the more you'll start to know. Now look at somebody that you don't like in church and say, grow up. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> tell somebody, grow up. <laughs> grow up. It's God's will for you to grow, isn't it? It is God's absolute will for us to grow in him, to grow in Christ. And the way we do that, the way we grow up, is to know up. Because if you don't, you'll blow up. I don't, I'm, just, I'm just rolling with it here. Know in whom you have believed. Remember last week I brought out the scripture, Paul started with a prayer, oh, that I might know him. But he ended his life in prison. And at the very end of his life, he's writing one of his last letters. We find historically one of the last letters Paul wrote at the end of his life, he said, oh, I know. I started out, oh, I want to know. He ended by saying, I know in whom I have believed and I am persuaded. That's the same word he used in Romans. I'm persuaded that neither life nor death nor anything can separate me from the love of God. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying Paul grew up. Paul grew up. There was a growth period in his life. There's another period when he said, I went to God three different times about a thorn in my flesh. And God said, my grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. Those are times of growth. But in those growing moments, that is where God has us doing the best when we're growing towards him. So I'm almost done. Seriously. This may be a record for me on a Sunday morning. I, there's a clock back there. I know you're watching your phones and your watches. Anybody still wear a watch today? If you wear a watch and you're proud, say amen. amen. Okay. I stopped wearing mine because I'm like, I've got a phone. I actually stopped wearing mine when I had a pager. Y'all remember those? Some of you were so important. The more important you were, the more pagers you had. You ever met one of those, like, lawyers or something? They had, like, 26 pagers. I mean, they were doing fanny packs before fanny, they were fanny pagers just all around. And when they would go off, it'd be like a suicide bomb or something. <laughs> I should have said that. You can delete that from the live stream. Man, y'all get me distracted. Okay, I got to get back to the word here. And the way that we grow is through knowing him, knowing whom you have believed. So the first reason why we do what we do and why we exist as a church is to help each other get to know God. But the second reason is to help one another grow, spiritually grow. So there's two areas of growth as I close. The number one area of growth is grow in Christ. Grow in Christ. Grow closer to God. We call that growing in your faith. We just read that scripture Add to your faith. Add all these things. And by the way, that list is not an exhaustive list. We read lists in the Bible and we're like, check, check, check. But, but there's more to growth than that. That's just to get you started. That's just, that's just stepping into the steps in the shallow end. 
okay? So there's more to growth, but we, the, the principle there is to add, add, add to your faith. Now I'm going to stop and say this. Addition is not the only way to grow. Subtraction is a vital part of growing. How many of you, when you came into the kingdom of God, you were adding some new friends and new family, church, but you had to let go of some? Some of y'all still need to let, let go. I believe there's a scripture, where is that, in Hebrews? Lay aside every, I know you don't like to call friends weights, but some quote friends, you know, the drama queens and the drama kings, and you're like, it's all about drama. You got to let go of that. Because it's hard to move forward when you got weight dragging you back, right? So add, but also, everybody say, you got to subtract sometimes. Let me, here's another way you can, you can add prayer in your life and subtract TV. Now, look, we all watch it. I love to watch But there's times when I'm going, wait a minute, I have spent way too much time doing this and not enough time doing that. Can I get an amen? So addition and subtraction. But we're talking about growing is about moving forward, about your faith growing a little more every day. You want to grow closer to God? Learn to trust Him. Learn to trust Him with everything. I mentioned finances earlier because that is one of the biggest tests. It really is. It is one of the biggest tests. Your finances are a mess. Instead of trying to work it out on your own, taking on extra jobs, missing church and doing this, why don't you just try to trust God? Just give him that. The government can't even do it. They want more and more of your money through taxes. I wish the government, if the, I promise you right now, I'm going on record. I hope a congressman, I hope the president, I hope somebody up in the White House hears me. If the government can learn to do 10% flat tax, nobody gets out of it. Kingdom of God. Some of y'all are like, man, I want to get my money back. Can I just tell you a little secret here? We'll have to do a financial, a financial seminar later. Do you know those of you that expect to get that refund back? And those are, oh, I'm, hey, I've gotten them back. Anybody gotten a refund back? Whatever that refund is every year, it's about the same amount, right? They give you child tax credits, all these tax credits. If you'll take that money, and if you'll just every year try to set aside that same amount of money, did you know you can take a dollar on week one and set it aside? Two dollars on week two, three dollars on week three, four dollars. Anybody ever done that? Man, we got to teach a seminar around here. This, by the time you get to that, you're over a thousand dollars at the end of the year. Week fifty, week forty nine is forty nine dollars. Week fifty, it's fifty dollars. Week fifty one, it's easier if you start it in reverse. Week one, do fifty two dollars, because by the time you get to Christmas, you're not wanting to. <laughs> you want to be coming down the ladder, not going up. Anybody? I've done that for a Christmas account before. But can I tell you, if we trust God with our finances, God said, I'll take care of it. You won't have to worry about anything else. So growing comes from knowing. When it comes to things like testing and God testing us with finances, remember what, what happened to Achan when he took what didn't belong to him? That, that, that's God's. Let God have his. God said, if you'll, if you'll give that to me, I'll take care of stuff in so many ways. I own the cattle on a thousand hills. And the old pastors used to say, and all the taters underneath the hill. God's got it. Everybody say, God's got it. I got to get off finances. That's just like, y'all looking at me like I stole something from you. But grow closer in your finances. Grow closer in your prayer life. How often am I praying? Compare how much time you spend in front of a screen, computer, TV, or phone, and how much time you spend praying. There are apps on your phones that will tell you how much screen time you spend. And then just compare that. Did I pray? Draw closer to him. The closer we get to him, the more we want to know about him. And the more we get to know him, the more we love him. It's impossible not to love God when the more we know about him. He's been so good to me. He's been so good to you and our families, and his grace is amazing, and his mercy is everlasting, and his love abounds to all generations, and he just keeps blessing and blessing. The more I know him, the more I love him. The more I love him, and the more I love him, the more I want to do what he asks, because he said, if you love me, what I ask is not grievous. Everybody say amen. amen. So grow close to him. Want your joy back? The Bible says in his presence. There is fullness of joy, and the joy of the Lord is our. So you want your joy back? Get close to him. That's just in his presence. But watch this. 
The Bible says at his right hand, that's even closer, are pleasures forevermore. So draw close to God. That's the first thing we're trying to do is get to know him. The second area of growth is growing closer to the body of Christ. And this is where we're done. We need each other in these last days. We absolutely have to have each other. Lift up one another. The Bible says it like this. One puts a 1,000 to flight, but two puts 10,000. Three, 100,000. Four, I mean, it's just exponential. It's multipl multiplicative or multiplicative. So that's part of the reasons why we're having Fellowship Sunday today, to grow closer to one another. So today, in just a minute, when we dismiss, if you don't know somebody out there, just go up and introduce yourself. Say, hey, how are you doing? Tell me about you. What's going on? Can, how can I pray for you? Is that all right? You have to pray first. That's got to take care of your prayer life first. But then, how can I pray for you? What can I do to encourage you? That's why we're doing to grow closer to one another. That's why we're doing what we're doing, to fellowship like they did in the book of Acts chapter 2. The Bible says they were in fellowship, breaking bread, the apostles' doctrine, house to house. We're just going to go from parking lot to parking lot. We're going to go from hot dog to hot dog. But either way, we're going to fellowship from bounce house to bounce house. We got, we got horseshoes out there, cornhole contest, basketball. I mean, we got all. But let's take some time and grow in our knowledge of one another and grow closer. We're growing closer to God, but let's grow closer to his body, and that is each other, because we need one another. And watch this as I close. The more you know, the more you grow, right? The more I get to know you, and the more you get to know me, the more we grow. Why? Because when I get to know you more, I can pray better for you. Because y'all know how we do, right? We come to church. How you doing? Great. Whole world's falling apart behind you. But we just, I mean, I hate to say we lie, but, you know, it's just kind of our standard response. How you doing? Oh, everything's going good. Yeah. And especially if you hear somebody in the hallway, you know, you go up to Brother D, your world's falling apart. How you doing, Brother D? Brother D, man, I just got a raise at my job. I just got my new truck. So what do you do? You go, man, man, that's great. I hate him. No, yeah, man, that's good. <laughs> and you're like, man, that's great. And then he says, how you doing? When he says that to me after telling me he just got a $30,000 a year raise, I'm praying for that, brother. But when he says that to me and my world's falling apart, what do I do? How you doing, brother, brother Mitchell? Oh, I'm doing good. You're not about to tell him, you know, your cat bit you and this happened. But, but when we, we get to know one another, then we can pray better. And here's the second thing, the last thing. When you get to know somebody, then when the devil comes in and he tries to destroy or tries to cause disunity or tries to start gossip, somebody tries to start gossip about you and I know you, uh-uh, I got your back. You can, somebody can come to me and tell a lie about you all they want to. They don't know you. They may know the old you, but they don't know. No, 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 no. That's not true. I, I was just, I ate breakfast with that person yesterday. I, I had lunch and I prayed for them. So we have each other's back. So we want to know God, and then we want to grow in our faith. And as we're growing, we're growing closer to him. Remember the relationship? It starts here, and it goes here. But you can't have these relationships effectively unless you have this one. Love God, then love your neighbor. So we want to know one another. That's our assignment today. Won't you stand with me? Knowing God and growing closer to him and closer to one another. Lord, we thank you today for this beautiful day you've given us. Thank you, God, for leading us here today. Thank you, Lord, for everyone that's here. I pray that you would bless this food and this fellowship that we're about to partake of. I ask you, Lord, to just let your spirit be upon us, even while we're playing games and laughing and just hanging out together. Lord, I pray the power of the Holy Ghost would rest upon us. In the name of Jesus, bind us closer together in Jesus' name and help us, Lord, as we help one another. And everybody say, in Jesus' name.